Para sa lesson natin today, ang itetest naman natin para sa ating hypothesis testing is yung chi-square goodness of fit. Now, umpisahan natin ito sa ating word problem for today. Now, dito sa chi-square goodness of fit test natin, Tash, who is a manager of car dealership, did not want to stock cars that were bought less frequently because of their unpopular color. Now, the five colors that he ordered were red, yellow, green, blue, and white. Now, according to Tash, the expected frequencies or number of customers choosing each color should follow the percentages of last year. He felt 20% would choose yellow, 30% would choose red, 10% would choose green, 10% would choose blue, and 30% would choose white. Now, he took a random sample of 150 customers and asked them their color preference para lang ma-check kung totoo yung uh, mga percentages ng mga popularity ng color ng mga kotse doon sa kanyang shop base doon sa last year data, data niya na pinakita ko, pinakita ko kanina doon sa mga percentages na in-enumerate ko. Now, ito yung breakdown ng survey ni Tash doon sa mga 150 samples niya na tinanong niya kung ano yung mga color preference nila sa isang kotse. Now, dun sa 150 samples niya, 50 doon, pinili ang red, 35 naman is yellow, 30, green, 10, blue, 25, white. So, yan yung uh, mga number of uh, um, participants niya nagsabi nung color preference niya base dun sa survey niya. Now, yung last year's car color percentage data na kasama dun sa word problem dun sa pinasa ko dun sa previous slide, dun sa red cars, meron 30% na bumili ng red cars last year, 20% sa yellow, 10% sa green, 10% sa blue, and 30% sa white. Now, paano tayo gagawa ng hypothesis testing base dito sa... Um, task ni Tash na malaman kung parehas lang ba dapat ang proportion ng mga taong pipili ng mga kulay ng kotse para dun sa current um, year na nagbebenta siya ng kotse. Now, ito yung um, chi-square goodness of fit at ito yung ating gagamiting hypothesis testing para ma- uh, ma-test yung ating null and alternative hypothesis. Now, sa pagsulat ng null hypothesis para sa chi-square, we have p sub 1 equal to p sub 2 equal to p sub 3 equal to p sub 4 and equal to p sub 5, which, in, which is p sub 1 is proportion of red um, cars, tapos p sub 2 naman yung yellow, p sub 3 yung green, p sub 4 yung blue, and p sub 5 yung white. Now, to explain yung ating... Uh, um, mga symbols dito sa null hypothesis, it means that there's no significant difference between the proportions of the customer's car color preference from last year. So yun yung test natin para sa ating null hypothesis. At yung ating alternative hypothesis naman will be P sub 1 not equal to P sub 2, not equal to P sub 3, up until P sub 5. Now yung P sub 1 natin up until P sub 5 is parehas lang ng mga P sub 1 natin sa null hypothesis. So ang ibig sabihin ng alternative natin is there is a significant difference between the proportions of the customer's car color preference from last year. So yun lang naman yung ating test para sa hypothesis testing natin today. At gagamitin natin yung chi-square para malaman kung i-reject ba natin or hindi natin i-reject yung null hypothesis kung wala namang pagkakaiba from last year. Now, paano ba yung mga procedure ng paggawa or pag uh, um, sagot ng hypothesis testing para sa chi-square? So, umpisahan natin sa step number one, um, pagsulat ng uh, hypothesis natin. At sa step number two naman, yung mga conditions. At yung mga conditions natin, tulad ng mga conditions doon sa pag-test ng uh, proportion doon sa mga previous lesson natin for hypothesis testing for proportion, ang karagdagan nga lang is kailangan natin masatisfy yung ating uh, expected count. At ang mga expected count daw natin, which is n times p sub i, should be greater than 5. So, paano natin compute yung ating expected count or expected value? So, yung ating n dito, yung sample size natin is 150. At ang expected count or expected value daw, ang formula niya is n or sample size times the individual 
proportion doon sa word problem kaya p sub i and all of them should be equal to 5 otherwise pag hindi siya equal to 5 i mean greater than 5 hindi siya magsasatisfy doon sa condition natin so check natin yung ating uh, conditions para dito sa word problem natin doon sa car color preference so 30% sa red 20% sa yellow 10% sa green 10% sa blue 30% sa white using the formula n times p sub i so n times p sub 1 which is 0.30 times 150, which is your sample size, is equal to 45. P sub 2 is 0.20 times 150, which is 30. At kapag tinapos nyo yung inyong uh, N sub P, or N times P, you'll have 45 for red, 30 for uh, yellow, 15 for green, 15 for blue, and 45 for white. At ito yung ating mga expected count or expected value na tinatawag. Now, since all expected counts are all greater than 5, we can proceed with our test. At yun yung ating step number 3, which is yung computation for our chi-square. Now, sa step number 3, ang formula na gagamitin natin para sa test statistic natin will be chi-square, represented by this symbol, equal to observed minus expected squared all over expected. So, kukunin natin yan sa bawat proportion ng ating population. Now, yung umpisahan natin dun sa red. So, sa color red, um, meron daw 50 na respondents na nagsabi na gusto nila yung red na kulay para sa bibilihin nilang kotse. Now, yung expected value natin or expected count na kinumpute natin kanina, yun yung isa sa mga um, numerical value na kakailanganin natin sa ating chi-square goodness of fit test. So, yun yung expected. So, yung expected is n times p. Yung sample size natin is 150. At yung proportion ng red car from the previous slide is 30%. So, 150 times 0.30 is 45. Kunin yung expected ng bawat proportion. So, sa yellow, 30, 15, 15, 45. Which is pretty much yung ating value na nakuha dun sa ating conditions dun sa last slide. So, ito yung kakailanganin natin para dito sa formula natin. So, sa ating last column, ito na yung tinatawag natin na chi-square computation. So, yung chi-square natin given by this formula. So, O minus E, which is observed minus expected squared divided by E. At kapag sinubstitute nyo yung sa proportion sa red or yung ating data set sa red dito sa formula na to, ang lalabas sa sagot is 0.83. At para naman sa yellow, 0.56. Sa green, 15. Sa blue, 1.67. At sa white, 8.89. Now, kapag inad nyo yung inyong mga chi-square value, ito na yung ating test statistic na tinatawag. So, yung chi-square natin is equal to 26.95. Now, once again, nakuha natin yung mga value na yan by using the formula na hindi ko na pinakita dito sa ating um, board, pero basically, direct substitution lang siya ng bawat O at E sa bawat um, item doon sa inyong uh, chi-square problem. So, paano naman natin makukuha yung ating p-value basis sa ating test statistic na chi-square, which is 26.95? So, kakailangan yung gumamit ng calculator at saka ng table of values dun sa likuran ng mga libro nyo para makuha nyo yung p-value for 26.95 with the degrees of freedom of 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 yung ating degrees of freedom because it's n minus 1. So, ito ngayon yung ating p-value. With a chi-square of 26.95, degrees of freedom of 4, yung ating p-value is 2.03 times 10 to the negative 5, which is approximately equal to 0 0.0000203, which is really small. So, kaya kapag masyadong maliit yung inyong p-value, kahit sa 1%, 5% or sa 10% significance level, i-reject -re -re nyo pa rin yung null hypothesis. So therefore, yung ating conclusion for step number 5, since yung null hypothesis nyo is rejected, so that means in favor yung ating hypothesis test dun sa alternative hypothesis natin. So with a very small p-value, we have sufficient evidence to reject the 
null hypothesis, which makes our test significant and therefore there's a difference between the proportion of the customer's car color preferences from last year's data. So, ibig sabihin si Tash, pwede niya nang i-conclude na magkaiba yung color preferences ng mga tao this year compared doon sa last year base dun sa ginawa natin chi-square goodness of fit. At yan yung paraan ng paggamit ng chi-square goodness of fit test para sa ating hypothesis test today.